bring a move in then, shall we? Last year's build saw the launch of the Windows Terminal, and with that, the new command line app. Microsoft ushered in a new era. Here to tell us more about what command line tool users can get out of it, please welcome Kayla and Craig. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. It's great to have you both. It's great to have you both here. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't think either of you really need any introduction. I've seen uh, on Twitter and online, uh, this this has just been blowing up the last couple of days. But for those that, that have been living in a hole and haven't seen uh, haven't seen you guys, uh, what's um, let's know what you work on at Microsoft. Kayla, we'll start with you. Uh, so I am the program manager on Windows Terminal. So I run everything from like deadlines that we deliver or features that go into it. That's kind of what I manage. And then when I have enough time, I also write some code for Terminal as well. And then, Craig? Um, I work on the Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm also a program manager, um, so very similar. I work on deadlines, what features are uh, being worked on, and uh, as well interface with the community. Love it, and I'm super excited about this session. Uh, I actually have a kind of uh, admission to make. I've been a, I'm a complete noob on all this stuff. I've been a, a, a Mac user for a number of years, like six or seven years. And uh, just like six months ago, I started, I pulled the Surface out and I started using that as my machine. So I've installed both the Windows Terminal and uh, WSL2, uh, but I'm, I'm definitely a noob. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna learn something during this session. Uh, and Kayla, Windows Terminal, as we just said in the opening, was launched in preview here at Build last year, right? So I bet it's been a, a hell of a ride. Can you tell us about that journey a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So at Build 2019, we did announce that Windows Terminal was becoming a thing and that we were working on it, and we open sourced it right at the booth. We hit um, like make public on the repo, which was really cool. And then since then, we've been in preview up until two days ago. Um, and we've been working with the community and having tons of GitHub contributions and a lot of the cool features that are in Terminal are from community members. So it's been really fun just working with a lot of people and getting Terminal to where it is now. Yeah, it sounds like one hell of a ride. And uh, I, I saw in the keynote some of the some of the stuff you demoed, which was awesome, by the way. The, the way the whole thing was produced was, was just so fun to watch. I really enjoyed that. Uh, so as a new user, I personally and, and other people that may not have used the the terminal yet, uh, I'd love to know if you've got any tips and tricks you can you can show us. Um, Kayla, are you able to show us a demo or some tricks of how to do some cool stuff? Yeah, sure. So I'll share my screen with you. And let me launch my terminal. So I did, we just did a live session maybe an hour and a half ago. So I did already customize this profile, but I will show you how to customize another one to get it looking like a retro command prompt. So I haven't demoed this yet. Um, getting all the exclusives. Oh, I keep seeing people on people on Twitter giving their uh, their backgrounds and all this kind of stuff as well. So yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to make this look like a really old, um, like CRT display, um, with some features from the community. <laughs> so the first thing I want to do is change the font. So I actually have a font from like this, I think it was like old school fonts website. Um, so I can make this look kind of like it did back in the day. And then I made a color scheme called retro. So that'll give me that nice green uh, foreground with the back, uh, black background. And then of course we need the retro um, windows flag waving in the background so I can add the background image of my GIF that I have that I use all the time. Um, I do like to store my images in OneDrive. So if I have multiple devices, I can share the same file across multiple devices and it's a lot easier to get my settings across. And then I'll just shrink this down with background image stretch mode set it to none and then move it to the bottom right because that's the that's where I usually put it. And then the last thing I want to do is enable this new feature uh, that was created by a community member called Experimental Retro Terminal Effect. And enabling this, I need to launch another tab to show you it actually working because it needs to restart. But you can see there's like some glowing text and scan lines going on and like <laughs> the cursor looks pretty glowy. So this is like a really retro way to make your terminal look cool. Um, so this was all the background image as well as the scan lines and glowing text. Those are both community contributed features, which is really cool. That is fantastic. I love that. And I can't wait to get off air tonight. And the first thing I'm going to do is go and configure my and personalize my Windows terminal. I, I can't wait. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> it, 
It wouldn't be a build a uh, digital interview without me asking you to show us some kind of uh, sneak peeks of what's what's coming up in Terminal. Uh, I'm sure there's some new stuff you're working on too. Yeah, so I did just pull from GitHub recently, maybe a couple days ago, and I'm I'm on one of my developers branches to get some of the new stuff. So this is the dev build. I built this using Visual Studio and I pulled from GitHub, cloned the repo, and then built it. But we're adding in the preview coming in June, there is a color picker in the tab. So you can pick your color this way. You can also hit custom and then do like an RGB or a color picker here. And then you can also have your RGB codes or your hex code. And this is especially nice because you can match it with the same hex code that you're using in your background color. So this is a really cool feature coming in June in the preview channel of Windows Terminal. And then the branch I'm on, which will be in master soon, is this rename tab branch. This is from one of my developers. And you can put anything you want in here. And then that will be your new tab title. So there's some new stuff coming, um, especially with tabs. But my another developer yesterday was working on some font rendering fun stuff, getting different weights appearing in terminals. So that should be coming in soon as well. Like uh, light and bold weights is coming soon too. Oh, nice. It's, it's, it's moving at a, a rapid pace. It's great to see this like rate of innovation. <laughs> and so when can people get their hands on these new features that you, you saw there? You said that it was going to be pushed to preview soon. Yeah, so we will do a release in June on the preview branch with all of this new stuff that I just showed. And then if you are not on the preview branch, that release will move into the stable branch in July. Um, so it's, there's not too much of a wait time, which is kind of nice. Nice, yeah. It's it's crazy to think that when you say June, it still feels like a long time away, but that's just around the corner, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. I love that. I'm going to definitely go and check some of that stuff out as soon as I can get my hands on it. Uh, and and Craig, I guess the natural thing to do, uh, especially for someone like me who comes from a, a Unix background, is to once you've set up the Windows terminal to uh, install WSL, right? Um, that's correct. And that's just been uh, WSL2, right? Just got announced as generally available here at Build. Yep, yep. So in Windows 10 version 2004, um, WSL2 is generally available. So that's coming this month. Nice. So um, what does that mean for, for customers that are using WSL, uh, the GA announcement? So if you're already using WSL, it's really easy to upgrade to WSL2. All you need to do is make sure you have the optional component of the virtual machine platform installed. Uh, from there, all you need to do is once you're on the latest Windows build, uh, it's one command line to do uh, to set your version. So it's WSL dash dash set dash version, your distro name, and then letter two. Um, and then from there, you can convert your distros back and forth from WSL2 to WSL1 anytime. So it's really easy to try. Nice. I actually did that one on my machine when I went from um, from one to two. I expected it to be like this this big kind of upheaval, but it wasn't. It was just like, oh, you've installed it. Now you're using using two. The experience was pretty neat. And yeah. so what? So in terms of WSL, I'd, I'd love to hear some stuff that's going up. I know we saw some stuff in uh, the Scott Hanselman keynote. Is there uh, anything you can share? Could you share us a demo and show us some stuff that's coming up in WSL? Yes, of course. So I'm going to switch over to my demo machine and we can take a look at the, the latest features. Uh, let me share my screen and then we'll jump on over. So here we are on my desktop and there is, um, I have a window open with a Python command I ran at the top. I'll scroll back up. And you can see I ran Python train.py while I'm trying to grab it. <laughs> but what we've done is we're training an AI to actually, um, in this case, recognize images using WSL. So this is a this is using TensorFlow, and it's running an, in a Linux environment using Linux binaries, and it's actually leveraging my GPU inside of Windows. And the really cool thing is now we have GPU compute support in the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, this is going to be available within the next two months. Um, and this opens up a huge world of possibilities uh, for people to use machine learning and AI workflows in the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, on top of that, you can also run other workflows that depend on parallel computing, uh, like data processing, for example. So this is actually our number one most requested feature in WSL. So we're really excited to uh, finally make it a reality. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. I love that, that if you've got a, a GPU in your machine, you can now leverage it without having to 
But I guess people before, what were they doing if they needed a Linux machine to do that? They were spinning up a, a VM in the cloud, right? Or um, having a separate machine for their Linux workloads? Or uh, what were they doing before this? Were they Exactly. Or dual booting uh, is another common one, right, yeah. um, especially if you have a really beefy graphics card that you use for gaming uh, on Windows, for example, is a really common use case that we've seen. Uh, now you <laughs> don't have to worry about dual booting and maintaining this totally separate operating system, which is nice. That is great. And I've been telling myself I need to go and invest in a, a huge uh, GPU backed Windows machine. So this is maybe the justification that I need to go <laughs> go ahead and do that. Uh, and, and there was also some cool stuff about uh, Linux apps, I think I saw as well. Yeah, exactly. So we actually announced that and supporting Linux GUI apps is on our roadmap for the Windows subsystem for Linux. So let's show a demo of an early internal build. Uh, you might have seen a, a screenshot floating around of Nautilus, which is basically the Linux um, file explorer. Um, it's used to look at different Linux files. And I can recreate that um, exact screenshot that was used in, in Satya's keynote. Um, so you can see here, I've opened up this Linux instance. Um, and what I've done is I've run Nautilus from my command line. You're going to see some errors here uh, because this is still an early internal build. Um, this work is actually a bit farther out than some of the other announcements that we've made. Uh, we're still working on it. But you can take a look at, if I open this file, this is the exact screenshot that they used um, inside of the keynote with Outlook running on the side. Uh, and what's really cool is you can open and access all these files. It runs entirely in a Linux context. So if you're using a Linux-based IDE, you can now target your Linux files um, and use it similarly to how VS Code Remote works. But as well, this includes support for other Linux IDEs, like anything uh, IntelliJ or PyCharm or JetBrains-based. Um, and I can access different file menus. And when I close this, it will close the window. Um, so this is overall something that we're really excited to be talking about, uh, and we wanted to share it with the community. And you can expect to hear more about it come holidays 2020, which is December 2020. Nice, I love that because I, I I often run Linux on my as a virtual machine, either in Azure or like locally on my device. And uh, the main reason I do that on my device is so that I can like get Linux GUI apps. So this means that I won't no, will no longer have to do that. So that's super nice. I love that. Um, and there's um, and Kayla, there was some stuff uh, that we were talking about. We also um, one thing I, we didn't really um, isn't really in the subject of this, but there was also a Windows package manager, right? Yeah, um, we did announce a Windows package manager in the keynote, so you can get that from I think it's on the Microsoft Store. You can get it on GitHub. Um, it's uh, the package manager is on our team, but I don't actually own it, so I'm doing my best, but uh, you can run Winget and you can install um, a bunch of packages that they have. And they're also open source. If you want to contribute your own package or contribute to the package manager itself, you can definitely do that on GitHub. Yeah, that's awesome. It just feels like these three kind of things colliding and just uh, and a whole whole bunch of awesomeness. I've seen the community really kind of rally behind these uh, announcements over the last few days with the package manager in the terminal with WSL for Linux when we need it. It's, it's, uh, it's great to see this happening. And now, uh, I don't need to go back to my Mac, right? I can do everything I need on my uh, Windows machine. <laughs> it's great. Uh, and so so both of you really, um, if people want to go ahead and get started, I know you've mentioned a couple of links, but just one thing for people to go ahead and, and check out. Uh, Craig, first, uh, how should people get started with WSL? With WSL, I recommend checking out our docs. There's an install page there. So if you go to the link, aka.ms slash WSL docs, that's the best place to get started. Nice. And Kayla for the terminal? Uh, that was also my answer, uh, but Terminal <laughs> Docs instead. Um, so definitely download the Windows Terminal from the Microsoft Store, and then you can visit our Docs page at ak.ms slash terminal dash docs, and that's where you can get started. Nice. I checked those docs out the other day, actually, and they, they were great. I uh, I went through them, and they're quite new, right? Yeah, we just launched them two days ago, so they are very fresh. <laughs> Love it. Everything's fresh, everything's new, everything's awesome. I love it. So uh, thank you so much, both of you, for joining us on the show and showing us some of those sneak peeks and um, things. Uh, the customization was great. And also the uh, the Linux GUI apps, that just blows my mind. Uh, so thanks so much for coming on the show and joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Well, we've come to our last...